Hello, I'm Doug, and this is the Taste and Sensibility Channel. And today we're doing honey review number 14, which I'm calling Challenging Honeys. So last June, I started buying a lot of different varietal honeys to taste them all and get new experiences. And after buying about 60 and tasting them all and taking them to work and seeing what other people liked and what their thoughts were, I wound up with these five that I couldn't quite put in any recommend category. I've recently come around on a couple that I was keeping in the challenging category, in my mind, because the uh, objectionable smells and aromas that they had didn't really come through on the taste. If you just thought about the taste separately, it was fine. It was good. It was maybe unusual, but all very pleasant and good. These, uh, not so much. These are the ones I couldn't bring myself to recommend, and I'm probably move, still moving on a couple of these. So these are the, the five that I find just hard to uh, recommend or hard to think of as uh, a honey that you want to be eating all the time. So we'll be going through these. So we'll be going through these one by one and doing the smell and the taste and maybe put a couple of them on food or in some tea. But just a few minutes ago, before I started here, I was checking a couple things on Amazon and popped in to read a couple of the reviews on these, and some of them were pretty favorable, way more than I was, even on the worst ones. So, obviously tastes vary, taste is subjective. These are just the ones that I couldn't bring myself to say are great and wonderful. So you'll see me point out their good qualities as we go through, but some of them have very few. So I have arranged these honeys in the order from least objectionable to most objectionable as you go left to right on your screen. So I'm going to partake of the smell and the taste and we'll see how we get along with this one. Oh, by the way, I paid $17.81 for 13 ounces of this, so relatively expensive. Comes from Germany through Amazon. They got to get their cut. And when you smell it, it's old, decaying something. Soil. It's very earthy. Earthy, maybe a little moldy, musty, mildew type aromas. Not really any hint of sweetness or anything you would think of as a food. So it's not real promising off the, off the bat there on the smell, but the taste gets better. Doesn't really taste that much like that. Rich, dark, deep. Dark fruits like raisins, uh, plums, prunes, figs, dates. There's a lot of that character to it, and there's a sweetness to it. It's more of a fruity sweetness than a sugary, syrupy thing. So the taste is pleasant. And I kicked this out of the challenging category. It was the smell I was uh, objecting to early on. This is not real honey-like compared to the light ones we usually see in the U.S. But I'm, I'm coming around to this one. It's very... Nice. I would. I think I'd like this on food and, and tea, but I'm not going to pop too early on this because I want to make faces or whatever if it's not too good. I only have one cup of tea. So I could give this a thumbs up on the taste. It's rich. Uh, none, of the none of the notes are long lasting. I don't know why it's all that important that they be. So, this forest honey, I'd say, is pr pretty good. Now we're moving on to Winter Park Avocado Honey. Avocado Honey has a lot of fans. And I just found it mm, detestable. Let's do the smell. Let's see. Did I pay? This was something on the order of 16 or $18 through Amazon. 
Okay, it's got a molasses type of aroma. Maybe a hint of the sulfury note that you get in molasses. It's not too promising as a sweetener there, I'm just based on what you're smelling, what I'm smelling. Oh, oh, super sulfury molasses. That's what I didn't like about it. Molasses is much cheaper than this stuff and you're gonna get the same taste or experience, I think. So don't buy this, just buy the cheapest molasses you can find, if, especially if it says sulfured. Molasses is a byproduct of sugar manufacturer refining. So they're taking all the dark things out to make it uh, as white and bright as they can. And sugar is a byproduct. Yeah, this is sour and tart. There's an interesting fruity note in there, but it's buried under all the other stuff. So this main flavor that just keeps going and going and going. Sulfury, acidic, tart, maybe a tinge of bitterness. Yeah, bitterness in there at the end. So lots of people like avocado honey. Uh, there are, they grow so many avocados in California or Mexico that you can have access to an awful lot of avocado blossoms. And I'm referring to this book by Laurie Masterton called The Fresh Honey Cookbook. It goes through a lot of different points about varietal honeys and how to use them in cooking, how to use their different notes and good points and feature them. So I'm going to be doing a lot of splicing here as I look for the avocado section. March, April, April. So this book is arranged by month and avocado honey is the honey of April, it says here. The taste of avocado honey bears no resemblance to the avocado itself. The nectar of the Avocado turns into a dark, rich honey that is reminiscent of molasses, sorghum, or Louisiana-style cane syrup. Recipes that have been created using any of these sweeteners or dark brown sugar will work beautifully with avocado honey. Color dark brown, smell warm vegetable, hay field, taste burnt sugar and molasses. Yeah, the bitterness of a burnt sugar and the sulfuriness of the molasses are the main things I got. And aftertaste, lingering cane syrup. No, it wasn't that pleasant. So I'll bring this up a couple more times, but it's very interesting and useful for figuring out some honey notes and for figuring out how to use them in recipes. So I, molasses has its place, and this honey is a very expensive version if you're going to cook with it or want those tastes, want the taste profile. So I can't really recommend this, although some people might uh, want to play with it. So the next one we have here is Heavenly Organics Neem Honey. This is a product of India. There is a neem tree or neem flowers. And when the bees visit those flowers, they gather that nectar. And it turns out like this. This is very dark. It's had a lot of solids in it and I put it in hot water to dissolve it back again. So I would get a unbiased taste, well mixed, well, the smell is very sugary, molasses-y, brown sugary, brown sugar, that's probably the strongest note there. And you know, it's an interesting mixture of brown sugar and molasses and something lighter. There's a lighter sweetness to it. It's like if you mix corn syrup and molasses together, half and half, it might turn out like this. But it's not uh, deep and rich or complex. 
I'm getting those two notes, molasses, a few molasses notes, and the corn syrup. Light sweetness. There's a tartness to it. A little bit of a bitterness. Those aren't major and they're not really objectionable. But there's nothing much to recommend this particular honey. It would work fine as a sweetener. Some people might want it on a biscuit or a piece of bread toast. So I'm not opposed to people having it or for even for me consuming some. Mm. Sticky. But I just can't uh, recommend it very heartily. I think I found this at a Whole Foods for $10, $11, dollars, something like that. It was on the shelf there. I didn't know the type. And boy, was I surprised when I tasted it. And I just wanted to read this funny review. I meant to read it at the time of the Neem Honey because that's what it's about. And this is one of those little Amazon reviews. People put a couple lines down. And this was from uh, last August in 2018. Terrible. I wish I didn't buy. This ruined my homemade shampoo recipe. It stinks and tastes terrible. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Dumped it out and we'll use the jar for something of quality. So they didn't think much of the neem honey. Although I was there a few months ago probably. But I didn't dump it out, did I? I'm going to make you a YouTube star. So we're ready to move on to a Scottish heather honey. This is from John Ellis's Apiaries, which you can find on the internet and see pictures of the hives and boxes where the bees live. That's very interesting process and history there. This is a product of Scotland. And the aroma is very vegetal. And not just vegetal, but rotting vegetal. Dead leaves, rotting leaves in wood, the soil under the rotting things. Green, grassy, herbal, vegetal, soil, earthy, yeah. So I'll do a little taste with the toothpick and then maybe put it on some bread. See how this goes with food, or, or maybe tea. Wow, it's all airy, bubbly foam, and it's not really sticking the way honey does. Oh, there's extra notes in there, but the sweetness is pretty nice. It's a lighter, lighter kind of sweetness, but that vegetal rotting thing it is still there. It has not gone anywhere. It's on the taste to a significant degree. Okay, that's not awful. There's buttery notes. There's a, a strong bitter component. That is not totally unpleasant. Just something you got to get used to. So there's a sweetness, a buttery nature to it. Hmm. Okay, that's a good candidate for putting on some bread here. But the foam is so strange. It has totally a different texture than the honey itself and doesn't stick to things. But if it's foamy, it doesn't stick to the spoon. So I have not liked this one for months. I just thought it was awful. That was maybe mostly due to the smell. But it's a favorite of some people. Oh, I printed out a couple of reviews. Here's someone talking about the Scottish Heather honey. I had to try it. It's very high quality honey. Not to my taste though, as it's almost too much. Very little goes a long ways. Strong flavor. Others like it that have tried it. It won't be wasted. So that's how, kind of how every group I was in at work at lunchtime testing some of these honeys was, was I was always surprised at other people liking things so much that I found really questionable. 
And it's never the people you think it will be. Okay, I might be coming around to this one too. Let's see how it is on bread. Combines very well. This is a, a rye bread with caraway seeds, so it's got some flavors of its own. Nothing's getting covered up or buried. I can taste the notes of the honey that I've just mentioned. Butteriness, a bitterness, and vegetal notes. Okay, all the rotting things aren't nearly as apparent with the food. So I have to adjust my opinion again. This one is uh, better than I have been thinking for months and months. And I just tasted it yesterday. So this guy I like. I might be the one to put in the tea because I know this one's vile. I'm going to go ahead. Good thing I got enough spoons here. I didn't use them early on, but going through them fast now. This will be the best candidate for the tea taste, except I can't get it on. Here we go. I'm gonna get it on the outside. Okay, Scottish Heather honey and tea. Okay, that's nice. Very few of the rotting, decaying vegetation nuts. They're almost gone, but the there's still a herbal vegetal nature to it. And there's a hint of the butteriness, but it's, that's mostly gone. It does an excellent job of sweetening. So Okay, I'm a little red-faced on this one, too. It has changed so much since I first got it. Unless I've changed much. Okay, well, that will use up my cup of tea. I only have one here. So I've got a special hatred for this one because of all the tasting and smelling I've done over the weeks and months. This is an Italian company, Salmiolato. Chestnut Blossom Honey. It's a product of Italy. I bought it on Amazon. I have the price here. $20 for an 8, 8.8 ounce jar. So it's expensive. Now I was expecting it to be really special and good with that kind of price. But when I smelled it, it's like, whoa. Oh, a locker room, old sweaty socks, maybe, oh, oh, it's like going into a, 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 le a sporting goods store with lots of leather goods, and they're new ones, there's kind of a leather smell and a chemical smell and all the tanning chemicals, something like that. A golf, a golf bag store golf glove store, baseball glove store, shoe store, shoe store, yes. All the combination of leather things and new plastic things that are still emitting odors. Yeah. So it's not a very pleasant or appealing aroma. And then everything you get on the nose comes through on the taste, plus more. Oh, that's strong. Oh, that's strong. Okay, well, you know what? The rotting vegetation notes that I got in many of these, I thought were in here and that's not exactly what it is. And on the taste, it 
it's not really in there. The sweetness is in there, but you can't really identify the other notes making up the flavor and aroma. That is not as bad as I thought it was, but it's certainly the least, uh, it's still in this position, last. So maybe I'll put it on bread. The nose is much worse than the, than the palate. Let's try a little bit. See if I can come around on the one I've loved to hate for months. Okay, it's spread around on the on the bread. Wow, the rye and the caraway seeds are coming through strongly. And the honey notes are receding into the background. It's not the way my first few experiences were. So apparently my palate's changing and becoming more accepting of these odd, strange flavors. So there's hope for me yet. So this was my most challenging review because I wasn't sure I was going to be able to say anything good about most of these. But I actually surprised myself at the end with, uh, I shouldn't have read all those good Amazon reviews right before I did this. So my mind was opened up a little bit more. I was a little more accepting. I found some good points in some of these. And we're going to keep charging ahead with this series of reviews. Next will be some single varietal honey, and then we'll keep alternating with collections of various types. So if you like what you're seeing here, subscribe to the channel, throw some comments down below. Give this review a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And if you subscribe, you'll want to click the bell for notifications when we post new videos on Mondays and Thursdays. So I'm going to work on not saying so, so much, and that's all for now.